Hey everyone, we're at CES 2020 and I am joined again by Gordon from PC World. Check them out on YouTube. You've got uh, one of them websites as well, one of those, those fancy so. internet them, sites. Yeah. So PC World's been around a while. Gordon uh, has done a few videos with us in the past. We are revisiting a topic that we did at Computex 2018 or 2019 Computex. And that topic was, is Intel screwed? Part two. Part two. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So, Gordon, uh, should we, how do we want to recap? Do we want to recap what we said originally? Yeah, because I, okay. I, I, you know, that was seven months ago. I don't remember what I said. I don't even know if I meant it, but no, <laughs> I, I can't remember. Let's find out how right we were, Steve. Okay, so I had or to watch wrong. it. I watched it back, and this was, we filmed it just before Ryzen 3000. So it would have been, July, uh, July was the launch for a lot of that stuff. And then we filmed in June. And you started off by saying, uh, Intel in the immediate future is screwed. It's not the end of Intel, that'd be crazy. Do we still agree with that? I think you were dead on on being screwed in the immediate I future. Was, I think, yes, I think they were screwed, but you know, that was in June. They didn't launch the parts yet. I think it was actually grimmer once Ryzen 3 launched for Intel yeah. than I expected. Because screwed is like, it means anything. Oh, I'm screwed. I, I left my pen at my, my hotel desk. It's like, oh, I'm screwed because I'm stuck in the middle of the desert. That is kind of differences. It feels so like- is that, is that where Intel is now? They're, they're not quite in this desert, but it's not, it's not, Ryzen 3000 was, yeah. It was more than screwed almost. I mean, there's stronger words that you could probably use, <laughs> yeah. it feels yes. like. Yeah, I think for the, I think for the Ryzen 3000 launch, I mean, the 3900X and then later the 3950X both did something that in our original video I didn't think was going to happen, which is uh, outperform Intel in Adobe Premiere. Yeah. So in our original video, I was talking about how, you know, Intel still got this Adobe advantage where it's all frequency dependent. But with the architectural changes to Zen 2 and I guess with Adobe CC 2020 changes, the 3900X actually outperformed the 9900K, which I was not expecting at all. Yeah, I mean, there were, I mean, it was like there, it was really, there were, you could justify a 9900K, but the justifications just got smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, it's gaming now, right? It's like gaming it. with a 2080 Ti. Right, right, right. On a high refresh panel at low res, right. lower, yeah. normal res. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, that's, and then it just, it's tough. Who's going to give up 12 or more cores for that? I just, it was, so we were right. They are screwed. Yeah. But we're also, I, I feel we're a little wrong because they were like way more screwed. The extent to expected. which Intel is screwed is far greater than we predicted. Yes. But yeah. short term, in the short term. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, long term? Uh, one of the things we were talking about was, you know, Intel, Intel doesn't care about desktop. Uh, Intel cares about server and mobile or laptop to some extent. But AMD now at CES this week has its Ryzen 4000 series CPUs for laptops. And it's got new uh, APUs and Intel's biggest thing was Tiger Lake, DG1, which isn't even really ready yet. Yeah. So what do you think? Is, the, uh, are they, is Intel still stable in laptops or are they threatened there? I for the first time in probably ever, I think AMD has a legitimate shot to really dethrone Intel in performance, maybe even power, but bat laptops are different. You gotta have battery life that matters to people. Intel has been obviously ignoring desktop for the last few years, concentrating on laptop. Yeah. They've got a lot of stuff, one watt panels and all that stuff. You can get incredible Intel based laptops that just feel like it would take a long time for AMD to get that polish. That's sort up. of what we said about uh, about the desktop parts too originally. That's what we said, right? And so, then AMD came out of really kind of nowhere right. with, with good parts real fast. So, so. I, I don't know, That's but I do agree. I think, but you know, one thing is Intel's gonna fight on, I think we, we said this, unlike desktop, Intel's gonna fight them 
every inch they yeah, can yeah. on laptops, so they will. It'll be harder for AMD, but they got a real shot in it. I, my prediction forecast, AMD will win on H parts, on core count. They're gonna lose some single thread stuff. On new parts where multi-core performance is not really that important yeah. to a business professional or a normal person in Chrome, yeah, Intel's yeah. gonna lead in battery life. So you choose your poison. If you want eight cores, you go AMD, which is still good for them. If you want superb battery life, probably Intel. That's my guess. We don't know because right, right. AMD didn't give us any battery stuff. But I think, yeah, it, Intel's got a fight in the hand. AMD has a legit shot to dethrone them. So. Yeah, one of the one of the things you said. Well, you said a lot of things in that video. Oh yeah, what else what, did I say? That's one of them was uh, you were telling commenters to put their can of Budweiser down. Oh yes. But yes. another one was uh, let's see. You said Intel is a prideful company. They just know uh, they just know they don't have anything to really respond yet. It might not happen in 2019. And this was about desktop. It might not even happen in 2020, but when they want to beat AMD, it's going to be a monster part. So now that we have more perspective on, and I agreed with you on that too in that, in that video, now that we have more perspective on where Intel is for the past seven months, do you still think that uh, they're gonna come back in desktop in the next year? Because their roadmap looks pretty, pretty to use your word, pretty grim right now. Yeah, it was, it was it we were talking barren. about this. It's, it, it is really grim right now. I, in the, I still think because they have so much money in the internet, I said the Budweiser thing because Intel's not gonna just curl up and go away, they're gonna fight. So don't think it's over all, already. I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm, at this point, that's the bad thing for Intel in the past. Cause I've seen this pattern several times where AMD would come up and then Intel comes back. It's not a guarantee that Intel's gonna come back and beat it and push AMD back. Yeah. But I do think they will put up a real fight. And I think 2021 is gonna be awesome for people to pick between an Intel, whatever Intel has and whatever AMD has. So it'll be awesome. I don't know if they're gonna. How did you feel about the 10 series, the 10 X series parts, like 10980XE? I mean, was that, I thought it was pretty disappointing, the 10,000 X series launch. Uh, Cause yeah. it was like a re refresh, right? I, the best sign of the 10 series was, hey, we recognize we have a problem. We're cutting prices, <laughs> right. right? From $2,000 to $1,000. Having a fire sale was a good sign. Uh, it also may mean they have enough parts to sell. So on those, so that is a good sign. So if you do want Intel, you can, but no, the launch was like, it's still like, cause Threadripper 32 core just blew them out of them. You just like, that was like a- But, but Gordon, that was a paper launch. It was all a paper launch. Oh, on uh, I can't buy uh, I can't buy my 3950X or my 3970X. Yeah, you know it's because they're in high demand. This is this is my is that your this is my Intel oh, oh. Uh, Intel fan counterpoint. <laughs> so it's AMD was all just paper launches, Gordon. No, I they were that's... just trying to make Intel look bad, or as as soon as they could, even though they didn't have parts to sell. I I don't yeah I would disagree with that because both of them have had issues. 3950X was paper. And a lot of these new Intel parts you can't get too, so it's... I, That's I, just because everyone wants them. Everyone wants... I, I don't The, the I 10980XE is flying off the shelves. I, I wonder. I do wonder how they're selling though, I guess. <laughs> Not well. No. I know that motherboard manufacturers, from what they've told me, have uh, warehouses full of X299 and can't get rid of them, so... That's okay. See, that's, that's why the, the use of the word grim earlier was, <laughs> was correct. It's and screwed may not have been the correct, right. correct term, technical term earlier. So it's looking pretty bad. I just don't, and I really, it's like, I don't know. I just, for the first time I, I will say, cause I've been doing this a long time in the old days, AMD came up and they're like, my God, AMD in front of Intel for the first time ever in its entire history, AMD is beating Intel. But you know what? Intel always comes back. They always come back. You've got the money, they've got the fabs, they've got the brains. They always come back. They did. They did with they the came back and 64 blew, era. They yeah. blew them out of the water with the K7 was, they really said AMD was awesome in K7 days. And then Athlon 64, same thing, two years of AMD. Yeah. Intel came and just knocked them out for 10 years. Or 10 years later, AMD is just firing on all 64 core cylinders <laughs> I don't know. In the old days, right? 
they go, oh, Intel always comes back. They've got the fabs, they've got the money, they've got the brains. They used to say the same things about IBM in the 1980s. Right. <laughs> so I don't know. I just don't. And it's, I don't know. I can't say that. In the old days, I've had people say, yeah, I, you know, like, yeah, they're going to, you know, long term, you bet on Intel. These days, I don't know. Because their execution this year and the last year have not been impressive between yeah. graphics yeah. and CPUs. Laptops have been awesome. I have to be fair to them. Their 14 nanometer parts were really good parts. 10 nanometer is pretty good for what it is. But desktop side is, you're like, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I think Intel will fight, but I can't guarantee. No, you would never, I would never put any money on either one. Yeah. It's really going to be awesome for consumers because they I think the, the biggest thing I've noticed this time is that there's a lot more hesitance from both of us to say that Intel is coming back anytime soon. Sure. Whereas in June, we were both like, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, Intel, they have, the, they have so much money. There's no way if you're, I don't know what they are these days, but if you're approaching $200 billion market cap, right. And your competitor, AMD, is smaller than ARM, is smaller than NVIDIA, which only makes GPUs, then of course Intel should be able to come back. Right. But we haven't really seen proof of that. We haven't seen proof of it. And you know, as you, you and I know, we have conversations with vendors. They're all off the record over yeah. beers or cigarettes. Not me. Um, Not me either. <laughs> uh, but I have heard people say, oh, well, they, they do have something coming that's going to be awesome. I'm like, sure. I, before it was like I believe you. Okay, I, that's that's a good sign, right? That they're gonna they're gonna do something. Now it's sort of like I have to the, my, the position I have to take with Intel desktop side is I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. I don't think they're not capable of it. I think it's entirely possible they will be in leadership position in two years. But I'll believe it when well, I, I see I it. I remember two months before the 3950X came out, before we even had them, I had motherboard manufacturers sending me screenshots of their tests of the 3950X versus the 18 core 10980XE, neither out yet. We never reported on them because I looked at it and I was like, there's no way these numbers are right. Like 3950X beating Intel's 18 core right. and Time Spy Extreme, come on, that's that's where Intel does the best, the synthetic uh, benchmarks like right, Time Spy right. Extreme. But it was true. So yeah, <laughs> it's insane really to think surprise. a small socket to mainstream desktop part is kicking the crap out of a, you HEDT. Know, HEDT that's, yeah. that's, it's, it's mind blowing. The one right? thing that AMD I think lacks right now is a cheaper high PCIe count CPU where uh, lanes that is where with like a 10900X, we called it dead on arrival on GN and, and I definitely don't really think you should buy it. But I did have a few people point out and say, Hey, I do AI, I do machine learning. I just want cheap PCIe lanes. I don't even need the CPU. So AMD doesn't really have that now. They used to with the cheaper Threadripper. Right. Well, that's kind of gone away. Well, so and they were, they were sort of saying, oh, you want that and you, and you want that in low cost by that second gen Threadripper. Right, it's still right. out there. I'm like, people really don't like to be stranded on, on hardware, I find. Yeah. You know, like, no, it's hard to buy a 2005 and car in, in 2000. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly, yep. So, is Intel screwed part two? Intel is worse than screwed yeah. in the immediate future? In the immediate future, I, I stand by that, and I, they will fight back. We'll see when we get there. I'll believe it when I see it, but yes, <laughs> the Intel definitely is, in light of Ryzen 3000 and Threadripper, definitely more than screwed this this last year and maybe through this year too, so we'll see. So it's, it's grim. It's grim. It's our update. It's, just, it's bad, right? It's bad. Yeah, yeah. So, but that doesn't mean they haven't run out of money yet. So they're not done. Yeah. I, we were right. I was right. Yeah. We're right. Yeah. Immediate future screwed for sure. Worse than screwed. Long term, I'm a little more hesitant to say there's a guarantee they come back and desktop in the uh, long term as in the next few years. But I guess we'll find out soon. Okay. Uh, PS question. If, if we get to 2021, they have new parts. And they don't knock, they don't knock AMD parts out out like they did with Athlon 64 because Core knocked Athlon 64 out. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a knockout. If they just pull even, and then it's just kind of like one of those technical decisions by the judges, and they're about even prices, even performance. Is that enough? Well, I I'll say this. I think up until recently, for sure, uh, 
that would not be enough for Intel because up until recently, AMD was enough of a, an underdog where in the wider spread community, like comments and things like that, if they were at parity, as far as the community was concerned, AMD wins. But I think going forward, now that AMD is in a bit more of a lead, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get away with pulling the underdog card constantly. I, I, and I don't know, people are going to get bored of the, just like people got bored of the Intel story with, oh, here's a 7700K, it's better than a 6700K, whatever. Right. There's a possibility something like that happens with AMD too. We don't, we don't really know the extent of the Z architecture reworks yet. But uh, if they're at parity, I think the community will give it to whoever they want an upset from, like in a boxing match or something. But don't people want at that point, because Intel, it's insane, will be the underdog going into this, yeah. into this yeah. fight, into this prize fight. They will be the, the the underdog. People don't expect them to do better. Right. If they're better by even a little bit or even, and their pricing is hyper competitive. Yeah. Maybe that's enough for some people. Yeah, I think for, I yeah, AMD's still got that underdog kick to it, but it is, it is gonna get harder for AMD to, what they need to do is start under promising and over delivering because they're already winning so don't do what's going to happen now is the media will all pick it apart if there's bs marketing right from amd and their position they're in now it's going to get picked apart and so they they just need to focus on be true uh you know honest about the products and don't promise too much and deliver more than you promised and then i think they'll still be fine and one other thing is I think they, the community, that's you, internet watching, you need to manage the hype yourself. If you're seeing a story that AMD is going to do a 32 core Ryzen 9 in a mainstream socket for $180, that gets you built up to like, oh my God, this is going to come. I'm going to be so excited. And it's like, oh, it's, it's actually just a clock bump on this next thing. Yeah. Now suddenly it looks like a failure, even though whatever it is is still better. That's your fault because you're listening to all those leak stories, bad leak stories, bad reporting. That's just like, that actually hurts expectations. Yes, a lot. It yeah. does. Yeah. And I can tell you, so 2080 don't get, Ti, don't get too excited. That, that the hyper expectations that 2080 Ti will be the same cost as the 1080 Ti and it's going to be twice the performance. <laughs> but I heard it's going to be the next NVIDIA part will be 50% more performance at half the power. Right. So that means that uh, if you keep the same power, then it's double the performance, right? <laughs> Isn't that how it works? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. But it, I, it's a really about people. Don't don't let that hype ruin everything. Yeah, yeah. Don't let it ruin everything. That's right. So uh, Intel is still screwed. <laughs> Subscribe to PC World on YouTube. We'll link them below. Maybe Computex. We can do this again. Yeah. Every time we'll talk about this, take, take the pulse. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do this again at Computex in uh, May, June area. And... Check them out, links below. Thanks for watching, Gordon, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you all next time.